and you should avoid pubs, clubs, theatres and other such social venues. Theatres, theatres, theatres. We genuinely are a creative industry superpower and we, we should be promoting that and we've done that through the, the great campaign. And we've done that and we've done that and we've done that. All of us, not just actors, but, um, you know, the crew and the, and the people who make wigs, the people who dress us, uh, the stage doorman, the lighting, uh, every single person, the people uh, in the box office, everybody's affected by it. And none of us have any security or knowledge of, to, to know when it will come back. I went on my Wikipedia today, wanky I know, and whoever's done it has put it in them little sections and started it. Emma started a career at the Royal Exchange in a production of Macbeth. I think it's time I was honest. I won't be on telly today without theatre, but it didn't start there. No. It started in prison, serving time for soliciting. Theatre company came in, ginger lass, proper scary like. I thought, fuck's sake, I mean, theatre. But it were favourable when it came to appeals and that. I'd never even been to theatre. Ginger said theatre would help us deal with shit. She made us play these daft games. I mean, who plays bang in a prison with a prostitute, a thief and a murderer? And then she made us write our own monologues. How the bloody hell am I gonna do that? I ain't got nought to say. Jin shrugs and says, say out, use your experiences. So they get us up one by one. I'd have made a prick of myself, but appeal was coming up. There were about 50 cons and screws. Oh, I was stood there, ah, thumping, feeling like I was going to shit myself. And then I told it, my story. And I was so lost in it. It was unlike anything I'd experienced before. And total freedom. And suddenly my past didn't matter and what I'd done to survive and where I was from. Because all these eyes were looking at me. I felt so powerful. And for the first time in my life, I felt seen. I felt heard. I, I felt like someone. Ginge said I was talented and helped me turn my story into a play put it on. He invited the artistic director of the Royal Exchange and he offered me an audition. First day out. Theatre saved me and now we need to save theatre because it's more than just a building. It's a lifeline. I was 15. I was going on a school trip that day. My dad dropped me off at the gate, I got out of his work van and I remember seeing all the other kids, you know, bright coloured t-shirts, excited, gleeful, and I thought, oh, what the fuck am I doing here? And the coach pulls up, I'm straight on, straight to the back, hood up, head down, no messing about, I'm sleeping through it. Anyway, four hours later, I was woken up to this painfully out of tune rendition of Always look on the bright side of life. And I thought, fucking hell, if the boys could see me now, I'm screwed. Anyway, then I saw the sign, London's West End, we'd arrived. So we got off the coach, I got handed my ticket, I looked down, Billy Elliot, the musical. Oh, fucking hell. We took our seats and I put me up back up. I'm planning to get my head back down because I'm looking around and everyone's in suits, you know, looking proper classy. And I'm thinking, nah, this ain't for me. Night, night. And then the curtain rises. And the music starts and... All these people on stage singing at us. I sit forward in my seat. I hood down. I couldn't take my eyes off it. I was hooked. They created this world that I'd never seen before. You know, for two and a half hours, I forgot about who I was, about my life in Salford. You know, I even caught myself crying. I had a tear rolling down my cheek. What was happening to me? The whole way back on the coach, I was smiling. I couldn't stop smiling. And then I saw the sign. You are in Salford, and I decided in that moment I'm going to do theatre. 
I'm going to be Salford's Billy. I want to be on stage. I, I want to be telling stories. I want to be making people feel stuff, feel electricity, because that's what fate does. That's what it did to me that day. You know, young lad from Salford, 15 years old, 15 years later, I'm still doing it. I'm still feeling it. I'm still loving it. You know, we have to keep telling stories. It's not about just about a place to go, you know. It, it's who we are. It, it's our culture. You know, Theatre has the power to change people. And I hope I'm lucky enough to still be doing it in 15 years' time. When I was seven, our school put on a show in the church and Ben was stood next to me. These things are always done in high order, and me and Ben are the tallest. So I was stuck with Ben for years, and the kid's just so bloody annoying. He was always trying to talk to me off stage, and that is when you're meant to be quiet, because the audience will hear. I had a strong grasp of theatre rules even back then. I was trying to find my mum in the audience, and when I did, she was alone, and she had that face on, so I knew. We stood there, high order, a sea of nervous school children in vomit green t-shirts mumbling white Christmas. Then I saw my dad. When our set had ended, I stepped down and rushed to my mum and she was crying. And I remember thinking, how embarrassing. And this grandma came up to her and said, oh, love, I know, it was so beautiful. No, love, it wasn't. None of us knew our lyrics and none of us put anything into it, well, apart from Vicky, but she's one of those stage kids. But my mum was still blubbering. And I remember thinking, why are you crying like this here? You hide when you cry. And then my dad came over. He just kissed me and left. I knew they'd had an argument and I knew my mum was upset about it. I just couldn't see if there was maybe a bruise this time. I asked her why she was sad and she said she wasn't sad anymore. She said these were happy tears and that my singing was beautiful. It wasn't, but I took the compliment. And now I know they were happy tears, cathartic tears. And our show had done that. So nobody can tell me that theatre is not a necessity. It's a church, sacred, a safe space. It can be a healing process. And sometimes it can literally be fucking air. All the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and entrances and one man in his time plays many parts. I was that helpless infant. My early performances more often drew a smile. Then a whining schoolboy who, with open mind, wooed his Juliet at a disco. The first of many a masked ball. Mm. I marched loyally on as a devoted soldier, doing my bit to get to Saturday night, always followed by Sunday morn. Oh, if music be the food of love, then... But true love was danced one day without the need to play on. Then comes wisdom. For what is life if full of care? We have no time to stand and stare. Theatre is life. A rich tapestry playing out in front of all. At every level, great and small. London's West End, rightly celebrated. An attraction globally fated. Whilst touring productions leave their footprints uh, as inspiration for those that see to follow. I've reveled to full-scale operatic arias in the grandest of houses, yet felt my heart equally moved by smaller English libretto versions in ancient country churches. Yeah, Broadway's cool, but going to nine to five in your local village hall, packed out to the rafters every night in a row, when you're transported to America without having to go at all, well, that's just something completely special. Theatre is the pre-show meal, the interval drink, the after-show party, a full-blown local economy where fully costumed and, and made up dreams are illuminated, hopes are heard, lives are touched forever. I'm the wise judge, this is the story I shall teach my son. It's not time for the curtain to fall. Theatre makes a difference, that's our cue. Theatre is me, and it's for all of you. From this day to the ending of the world, 
but we in it shall be remembered. We few, we happy few, we band of brothers. Voiceless. Don't worry, nothing wrong with your sound. That was just an impression of me without the theatre. See, the theatre gives me a voice. It gives people like me a voice. The stage is our platform. Without it, we're silenced. The theatre is our home. It's our sanctuary. It's where we can speak and people will listen. It's where we can hold governments to account, where we can begin to fight injustices and where we can tell our truth. It's where we can make people laugh when they're sad and where we can open people's eyes when they're blind to the world. The theatre is our home. Our home is on fire. One by one, they're turning to ash in front of our eyes and nobody is putting out the flames. You might think that a theatre is closing down, doesn't matter to you. But if you like TV, films, you have a favourite actor or actress, I can guarantee that many of your favourites started on the stage. You know, you might never see your favourite TV show because you'll never know it existed. It might exist in here, but if we don't have a platform, then... You get it? You need to save us. You know... Uh, I had this amazing idea for a play the other day. I think you are going to love it. It's about this. <laughs> Public speaking classes are an amateur theatre group. Neither of them appealed. But I've made someone a faithful promise not to kill myself before I'd given at least one of them a go. It was always going to be public speaking classes until I heard that Linda Sorrell had signed on too. Linda didn't like me. Linda made me feel small. I couldn't possibly stand up and speak in front of Linda. So, instead, I'm Standing on a theatre stage, I'm performing the words of the resident writer. I'm pretending to be some ditzy trolley dolly. My ageing cleavage is on display and they're laughing at me. No, wait. They're laughing with me. <laughs> Standing in the wings, the applause rings out. I'm rooted to the spot with the feeling that passes through my body, something akin to how I've always imagined great sex to be. I decided to delay my death a little longer. This morning, I went from a dream about Linda Sorrell. And silently, I thanked her for disliking me. I thanked her for making me feel small. I thanked her for blocking my way to public speaking classes. Because this morning I realised that today is the 3,000th day of delay. <laughs> this blooming theatre lock has thrown me completely off my original trajectory. Oh, I guess I shall shuffle off this mortal coil at some point. But just for now... I'm much too busy writing my own words, telling my own stories, and shifting other souls off their trajectories too. Laps of the theatre with only my croissant for company. I get in my seat as late as I can. I'm on the end of the row.
it's fine. Try and spot anyone who's about and try and not be seen by anyone at the same time. And the lights go down. I breathe in. And I put my hand on my chin for comfort. I don't need to pretend. Not tonight, at least. Why should I? None of this is pretend. I recognise what I see. Things make sense. I feel them. It hurts. <laughs> we laugh together. First time I've done that today. It's like everything I've ever seen before, but different. I feel different. Exposed, but I'm fine. I'm safe. At the interval, an elderly couple behind me asks what I think. We don't really get it, <laughs> they say. I think about trying to explain what I, uh, they preferred the last show. <laughs> they let me into their own little world. They make me feel amazing. This play makes me feel normal. Like, maybe I'm not the only one. And even if I have nobody else, I have this couple on my side. I have this play for comfort. People with feelings and stories and life. How can I be alone? How? How? Two hours. 200 people. We're all here. How can you possibly feel alone when you're here? She's maybe one of the most incredible creatures that I've ever seen. I've ever experienced. Like, utterly, inconceivably breathtaking. There are so many different versions of herself. But everyone is true to her. So some days she'll be in red, glittery, campy heels, luring you in with a smile and the voice of an orchestra. She's the sort of woman that you don't mind showing your nan. She's a bit risque, but in a family-friendly way. And the next day she's all in black. She is a picture of self-reflection, asking these questions that I didn't even know existed and showing me words I didn't know I needed and I've got to delve deep into myself on those days. It's not easy on those days but I don't want it to be easy on those days and she's not perfect. She turns her back on people sometimes, she doesn't always let everyone in but she's realising that though. She's starting to realise that her arms are big enough to hold everyone who wants to embrace, but I'm scared that we won't get to see it. Because she's sick, and there is a cure for once, there is actually a cure for something, but the people seem really reluctant to hand it over, which to me is just fucking like, that's insane, isn't it? And it feels like the louder that I'm screaming, the less they're hearing me, and the more they're digging their fingers into their fucking ears, trying to drown out everything that I have to say, but she is a shell of who she was and they don't care at all about her or about me and I don't know what she'll do if she goes and I think people will be surprised at how much they'll lose because when she's alive she reaches out her hand and she shows you how to change the world and I don't want to say goodbye because there is nothing like her and I love her so much. Have you ever had that one face you know you'll never forget? I took this group of year nines from drama games, short films. They were lively but there was this one girl, Leah. She was always late and she'd tell me to F off. Whatever activity, we got a shrug or a I can't be bothered, miss, response. For my last session, I said I was going to take them to a panto and a backstage tour. 
Why? What's the point, miss? She couldn't see the point in anything. On the day, they're all hyped up at Haribo and the dame giving them a special shout out. Some of them had never been in an auditorium before, let alone backstage. I was showing them how the trap door worked and the set and all the costumes and the lighting rig. And we were leaving the dressing room and I saw Leah standing looking at herself in the mirror. Not checking her false eyelashes, she was standing looking at her reflection as if she'd never seen it before. Anyway, a week after, I got this. Dear Miss Jess, thanks for taking us round the theatre. I had a dead good time. Have a happy Christmas. Leah Dobson, 9J. It's not about the card. It's about the person holding the pen. When Leah looked in that mirror, she didn't see a 14 year old girl who was bathing and dressing her nine and six year old brothers because her mum can't get out of bed. She didn't see a girl whose early life was a series of different homes. She saw a possibility of a life that was completely different from the one that she knew then. She saw a future. Theatre gave her that. It wasn't me, it wasn't the show, it wasn't the building. She finally saw the point in something. And how many kids are going through life feeling like they live in a world where there is no point? How many more Leahs are there? I haven't got along. I've survived all these years and suddenly I find myself hanging on for dear life. But what a life. From the rags of the tents to the canopies of the gods, I came up in the world to welcome you into my home. And I've seen them all. Redgrave, Walters, Postlethwaite, Sheen, Jumbo, Esmond Halge. They were born here and I watched them grow and breathe and become great. It's been lonely here the past few months though and I've missed you, my family, terribly. I've had no one to share my stories with and that's important. Without stories, we don't exist. Who would remember me when I'm gone? Who would teach the next generation how to dream, play, and to reach beyond what is possible? I'm not ready to go. I can hear you in the corridors, whispering, looking worried, but being brave. I can hear your silent tears and I can see your heart breaking and I am so very sorry. I know you're grieving but don't give up on me yet. This isn't the end of the run. I am the lifeblood of creativity. I am the heart of this city. I am the Royal Exchange. And I know it is getting dark out there, but please, please, don't switch off the light. <laughs>